Would you tell us, Siegfried, about your personal um, reasons for, if you were prepared to share that, for, for this whole sensational organization being developed? And would you be prepared to do that? Sure. Um, actually, what got us uh, into this uh, field was uh, our experience with our own son. Uh, he developed epilepsy at about the age of, uh, well, it was a lengthy process, about age six to eight, mm -hmm. over that time frame. Uh, there were increasingly uh, bizarre behaviors and, and eventually it became clear we were dealing with epilepsy. And the, the medications uh, did the usual thing, they, they helped with the epilepsy, but his oddities and his difficulties really didn't, didn't go away. He just became a very strange kid. The seizures were kind of the, the part of the iceberg that was sticking up over the water but there was more below. And so our life was really quite difficult in the family and in school and in interaction with other kids uh, for about nine years until we found our way to neurofeedback. And now with this neurological framework, we said, okay, we can see this as part of the, the seizure phenomenology, that the seizure focus was disrupting his, his brain activity, mm -hmm. affecting his emotional life, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And the neurofeedback, bedded all that down to the point where he could now relate to people, was now making conversation, was interested in people, started making friends again, and then got himself into college and had a very successful college career. None of that would have happened without the neurofeedback. And how many sessions did he have and how did you come um, to find out about it? He had well over a hundred sessions. How we found out about it, this technique was being promoted for use with learning disabilities. Hmm because the Learning Disability Organization happened to be one that was open to new techniques. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, uh, the lady who was doing this, uh, just a few miles from my house in Beverly Hills, uh, she showed up at one of these LDA con Learning Disability Association conventions and uh, talked about her work. We found that out about it, went to see her, and within a month, which means about, within about eight sessions, uh, Brian was noticeably different. Neurofeedback was primarily in research at that point. There wasn't a lot of clinical work being done yet. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's sort of what inspired you guys, that you know, with, with the right attention, meaning your own, you could help bring this to many more people um, through a clinical environment, yeah. right? So the, the technique was in the hands of uh, actually, uh, essentially a graduate student. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and she said, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I'm not going to finish my graduate career. I'm just going to take this out to the world yes. because the world needs this. Yes. My wife's background is neurophysiology. Yes. I'm the physicist and the engineer, and I've been working with signal processing issues since forever. So she knew stuff that we didn't know, yes. but we knew stuff that she needed to know or that we could help her with. So we basically got into a collaboration to build a, uh, an instrument that took this technique into the modern world, which means software. Yes. Uh, took an analog instrument, made it a digital instrument, uh, computerized the technique, and so forth. And that now allowed us to uh, you know, have, have it available more cheaply. And then Sue, your wife, opened her own clinic and became a clinician. And from there, the two of you basically launched this field. We've taught in about 10 countries. And in all those countries, uh, there's a foothold now where this is starting to take off. Brilliant. We want to see this technique as being implemented as early as deficits are identified. Absolutely. And we don't have to label them. We don't have to poke and say, okay, was this child abused and so forth. Yeah. Says, no, there is dysfunction. Let's deal with the nerve You know, Let's train the brain back to good function. With your son, he had 100 sessions. Well over 100 yeah. sessions. Brian. Uh, you had eight sessions and you were seeing miraculous results. So where did he go from and where did he go? Where has he gone to? Um, what, would they, what were the symptoms and then what were the okay. uh, results? 
you know, in, 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 in medical terms, you would, uh, or psychological terms, you would say uh, he was Asperger's. Okay, couldn't yep. couldn't relate to people. Yeah, you would also say he was Tourette syndrome. He had these tics, uh -huh. right? He had various sleep disorders. He had these parasomnias, so he would have night terrors and sleepwalking and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, explosive rage. Explosive rage. So rage disorder. Uh, chances are, as a child psychiatrist would label it, would have labeled him childhood bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, there would be huge fluctuations in mood. So uh, bipolar insta uh, bipolar like instabilities, uh, deep depression, often suicidality, and of course it hangs together. He says, "Well, I'm an evil person. I don't know whether I'm even entitled to be here." Right? And then you you put that together with physiological depression, mm -hmm. and the guy was near the edge. It became a kind of a neurological attachment disorder. He could no longer relate to people. Mm -hmm. Now things were bizarre. I mean, he couldn't stand. He couldn't. Uh, stand teasing. He didn't understand humor. Couldn't mm -hmm. you know? Couldn't make sense out of conversations. So. Uh, and then his little sister passed away. Yes, and she, uh, sister passed away at 14 months. So that was a crisis in his life, mm. because undoubtedly, you know, he resented all the attention we paid to uh, his baby sister. Right. He says, wanted her out of his life. She died. And he says, Oh my God killed my sister, you know. Mm -hmm. because, so that sent him into a deep depression. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any easy relationship with other people, including his parents. Yeah. How is Brian now? Well, uh, he passed away, but... Uh, uh, a sort of a freakish thing happened after he started to do so much better. I mean, mm -hmm. he went to college and had a very successful time in college. Mm -hmm. But he was determined to go off all of his medication for his seizures. Mm -hmm. And um, although the seizures had been reduced dramatically, he was still susceptible to um, some isolated um, influences, like there's certain spices that he was hypersensitive to. And because he wasn't at home and they weren't controlling it, they think he may have eaten something that um, really affected him so strongly in the middle of the night that he couldn't control it and he had a grand mal seizure and he passed away. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the benefit of the neurofeedback treatment on all the rest of the things that he was doing up until that point had been so so massive that everyone had great hope that he'd be living independently and on his own. Mm -hmm. It was tragic. If we had known then what we know now, he might still be with us. Of course, that uh, galvanized, as if we need, still needed it, it galvanized us even further. Yeah.